Sigalova was the first in Russia to deal with the so-called modern dance genre. She created her own company that has traveled half the world. Today, she stages unique performances, and every new show becomes that season's hit. Anna was unknown, but became very prominent, partially due to the performance she staged. Her name first became known to the public after the first night of The Maids by Jean Genet in Moscow's Satirikon Theatre. Her choreography and unique vision in a play about homosexual passion shocked Moscow. It was then that Sigalova realized how difficult it was to get the right to artistic freedom. The famous Russian director Roman Viktyuk staged the play. Alla Sigalova could only influence the dancing, but it was her dances which made the play special. She made a sort of choreographical performance with the Satyricon company. I gave her this opportunity. I said, do it on your own, I'll see the result. At that time, I didn't plan a staging of that kind at all. At the Satyricon, Alla was offered a place outside of the limelight, but she knew she was capable of much more. She wanted to be amongst the leaders. She left the way she wanted to. The feeling of revenge engulfed her totally. It was a destructive feeling. She let it out. Sigalova set up her own theater called the Independent Company when all the other theaters in the country were owned by the state. Her first performance, Hide and Seek with Solitude, received a hearty welcome. One spends all his life trying to get rid of solitude. This is the key theme of all the shows by Sigalova. Her universal language of dance can be understood by people all over the world. I was on tour in Riga, the Latvian capital. People asked me, haven't you seen Sigalova's latest play? I said, no, I haven't. How come? She's a brand. Fantastic success, world tours, then suddenly, Alla dissolves the company. She's due to have her second baby. While the actors were searching for another job, Sigalova arranged for her family. We met at the home of one of the Russian directors, shared the same friends. I knew that she was rather known. I watched bits of her work on TV. It was quite interesting, at least it was something new. But before our meeting, I hadn't seen anything she had staged. She also didn't know anything about my work. I got a call, it was him. He was the director of the Stanislavsky Theatre. He offered me a job. I said my strongest no. I still remember it. It was fate that brought them together at the right moment. Men see a woman first, and only then a human being. My first impression, she was the right one. There was no fancy ceremony, but there was a church wedding. No cameras, no bright lights, no bridesmaids. That's how they stepped into married life, quickly and smoothly, the way their characters do. We were flying back from Venice. I noticed, just out of the corner of my eye, that their feelings towards each other were so fresh, as if they had married yesterday. They're a perfect couple, sharing their emotions and impressions. Alla gave her husband a son. Then she turned back to theatre, as an actress this time. She performed in one of Roman Kozak's productions called Jan. Sigalova made a successful appearance in two roles at once, as a 15-year-old girl and an old hag. Performing with Sigalova is so intense that one of her partners claims he loses two kilograms during every show. What kind of man are you if you can't stand what this woman can? It may sound glamorous, but this is what makes you grow up. Only after you pass this test are you allowed to think highly of yourself. I think a man and an actor should first reach her level, and only then is he allowed to have his word. What should I do now? Sigalova asks a lot of herself and out of her actors. 
Rumor has it that if she's not satisfied, she can quickly become angry. She's an awesome woman. She's very, very demanding. I know how violently she responds to mistakes. She'd make me play my role again and again until I'm almost fainted. Her profession requires that she's always on the move, going from city to city. Her performances are well mapped out in advance. So it's a rare occasion when all the members of Allah's family can sit at home together. Allah's son prefers going to the movies rather than opera or ballet. A new blockbuster will star some of their closest friends, and a premiere will be a good chance for the family to get together. Mother's show is about ballet, Ballet, while father's gives me huge laughs. Her performance is too sad. It's ballet, and I don't care for it. Only Mikhail gets a whole suite. The rest, smaller portions. Ella likes to pass remarks, or I'd say she registers ups and downs in your weight. She applies it to those around her, not just to herself. Instead of, how do you do, you can hear, you seem to have put on, or lost, a few kilos. One can really say that I don't feed them. The fact is that I don't do the cooking at home. But in general, I can cook, of course. Sigalova's cooking is limited to making tea. That usually happens at night, when she's recording a track for a new production, for example. She's gone through enough hardships and knows very well what it means for a student to play a lead role. In her Carmen suite, all the student actresses play Carmen. It's a bit different in each case. All the male students will be the remaining links in the love triangle. It's a mystery when Ala sleeps and how she manages everything, but at 8.30 a.m., Professor Sigalova is always up and about. She's a self-made woman, a strong and sufficient person. But she doesn't consider herself a feminist. Sigalova is still a sensible and emotional woman. She's quite small and very beautiful. All our company were in love with her. I'm no exception. She even resisted the act of Vladimir Mashkov, a rare occasion. There are a lot of erotic scenes in the Jan piece, due to the vision of its director, Roman Kozak. His wife does them all well. Roman says those scenes are not a cause for jealousy. Sigalova exposes her feelings on the stage, so she compensates by keeping a closed private life. And she has grounds for this. A happy family is a vague notion in the theatrical world. Each new work takes a huge amount of physical strength. As a director, Sigalova sometimes makes extraordinary decisions. She can leave an unsuccessful rehearsal without saying a word. She manages to extract from actors emotions that the scene requires. Today, they have the first reading of Madame Bovary. Sigalova has turned the serious novel by Flaubert into a musical. She's thought out the set and the costuming. Being not only the choreographer, but also the director of the play, she's at the heart of everything. Allah has got to such a deep heart that while talking, she started to question me what to do. And I tell her, Wait, it happens neither to you nor to me. What do you mean, what to do? But it's a problem, she says. And I understand she's entirely in this problem. Today, the young actors are trying out their future characters for the first time. A new musical will be about the thirst for love, the thing which is the main subject of Alice Sigalova's ordinary life.